Part 2 The Monarch A woman sees Doc and rushes up to him. Doc notices that she has clearly taken the substance. Not knowing what to do, he freezes in place as she charges at him with full force. Reaching him, she grabs onto his shoulders, squeezing while crying. I am delivered! I am free! The woman begins to weep, gazing into Doc's eyes as if beholding a long-lost love. I am delivered! I am free! She repeats, squeezing him tighter. I... I gotta get back to my car, he whimpers as he wriggles away. Escaping her clasp, Doc flees toward his vehicle. Reaching into his pockets to retrieve his keys, he is quickly reminded that he wears nothing but his underwear. Frustrated, he collapses against the car, presses up against the window, and looks at his daughter still laying inside. Locked out, he screams in an outburst of frustration. Calming down after a short while, he searches to come up with a plan. Looking around, he lands his gaze upon a loose piece of concrete broken off the sidewalk. He dashes for it, picks it up, and chucks it at his own car window. He shatters the glass, opens the door, and gets in. He then hears a siren. Doc turns around and sees a police car rolling up, stopping right before him. Oh no, Doc groans as two police officers exit their vehicle. What are you doing, sir? One of them asks. Look, this is my car, Doc explains. Really? And that's your kid? The officer questions. I don't know what you saw, but I just lost my keys. Right, you lost your keys. He glares at Doc, then yells. Get out of the vehicle and turn around. Come on, please don't do this, Doc pleads. Get out of the vehicle now! Complying, Doc comes out with his hands on his head. Is she unconscious? The officer asks, pointing to Delilah. His partner then walks up to check on the girl while he places Doc under arrest. Look, she's my daughter, okay? Doc says. She's dying! The officer then takes a good look at Delilah. Oh my, he remarks, then reaches for his radio. We need an ambulance on Gobi and Camp right now. We have a child unconscious in critical condition. Gobi and Camp. Promptly, he hears on his receiver. Sending dispatch. Meanwhile, being handcuffed with his hands behind his back, Doc yells out. I... Just listen to me, she's my daughter, I can save her! Just let me bring her back, please, I made a cure! You what? One of them asks. Look, see over there! Doc then lunges his head toward the crowd. Here's your proof! Just look, the cure works! The two officers then place their eyes upon the street, viewing the full panorama of the catastrophe that is unfolding before them. They see an entire mob locked in a heated battle among Herculean figures with not an indication of who is fighting what. They hear screams, curses, cries, howls, roars, hollers, wails and shouts. They see destruction, devastation, bottles, glass, spraying water, blood, injured bodies laying on the ground, a total dissolution of humanity. Some kind of cure, huh? The officer remarks. Sure, buddy, we believe you. Meanwhile, from afar, they hear the siren of their ambulance approaching. Then the siren stops. A moment later, a tremendous, bestial roar bellows out from the same direction. What was that? The arresting officer asks, suddenly alert. He looks at his partner, and his partner looks back, both confused, terribly unsettled. From there, they hear a powerful, rumbling blast. Startled and bewildered, Doc jumps back in fear. Although the blast itself was not seen, they all notice an orange glow of a fireball dissipating up into the air several blocks down the street. Following the blast, they hear that same mighty roar echoing away. What just happened? The officer asks. His partner picks up his radio immediately and calls. We heard an explosion on Camp Street. Was that our ambulance? They then hear on the receiver. We have just lost contact with your dispatch. Great, he mutters. Now what? We gotta get her to the hospital, his partner declares. They return to the police car and shove Doc right into the back seat. Let's get her secure, says the officer holding Delilah. Placing her in the back also with Doc, he buckles her in. The officer stares at her for a moment with a disturbed expression on his face, then closes the door. 
Once they take their seats, the officers turn on the siren and drive off, shooting through the streets at lightning speed, heading directly to the hospital. Seeing more activity along the road, they drive past squadrons of police vehicles streaming by, all converging toward Gobi Street. Something weird is going on, the driver yells over top of the siren. No kidding, his partner replies. I'm just about sick and tired of this whole place. Yeah, I hear ya, the driver echoes. What do you think is happening? His partner asks. I don't know, probably nothing we haven't seen. I hope so, he remarks, then sits up from his seat. Wait a minute, he says, pointing at an intersection up ahead. What on earth happened here? The driver looks and replies. I have no idea. Curiously, Doc lifts his head and spots a massive pileup of a car wreck engulfed in flames, blocking an entire intersection. One that Doc sped through earlier in the night. Oh no, Doc whispers, sweating from a sudden, debilitating dread. He ponders in horror as he stares. We gotta go the long way around, the driver tells his partner, grumbling. Taking a detour, they continue on. Along the way, the arresting officer lands a sight on Doc a number of times, as his partial nudity always catches attention. Eventually, he turns around and looks upon him with absolute disgust. I can never get used to your kind, he remarks, almost spitting. What were you gonna do anyway? Amidst the blaring siren, Doc barely discerns the accusation. Trapped in helpless turmoil, he offers not an answer. A voice shouts from the radio. Calling all units, calling all units. We need backup on Gobi. We need it now. All units? The driver comments. The voice continues on the radio. Approach with extreme caution. They are exceptionally strong. We've never seen anything like this. They are extremely dangerous. I repeat, extremely dangerous. It looks to be caused by a super drug. Look out for animals under its influence. We're having a hard time setting- Then with loud bangs, clangs, and sounds of chaos, the radio cuts off. The officers look at each other. Super drug? They note to one another. The arresting officer then turns to Doc. Is that supposed to be your cure? He asks. Petrified, Doc stammers. I, I, I didn't mean it to happen, he blurts out. What? I never wanted to, he says, floundering. What were you thinking? The officer shouts. It just went out of control, okay? Look, my daughter is dying. So it was you after all, the officer bellows scornfully. Oh, you make me sick, you piece of scum. Do you have any idea what you just did? Your little stunt just cost us our lives. What are you talking about, Doc retorts. You're going to blame it on me? Why can't you ever do anything? Aren't you professionals? As if hit with a brick, the officer's face distorts with fuming anger. Hey, we got a situation, the driver says, tapping his partner on the shoulder. They look out the window and see driving up fast beside them, inching closer by the second, a souped-up limousine, custom modified, exceptionally dirty, smeared with dust, Doc notices an X painted on its side. Aleph psychos, the arresting officer remarks, then quickly reaches for the loudspeaker. In the limousine, Doc sees a group of dapper gentlemen looking right at him, all wearing tuxedos, with one dripping, soaking wet. He must have been the one Doc saw on Gobi Street. Move, Move away, away immediately! immediately. This, this is, is a police, police vehicle. vehicle, the officer shouts into the loudspeaker. With no way to decipher what anyone is saying, Doc sees only frantic clamors. The one dripping points at Doc, identifying him, telling his mates excitedly. They then start thrashing about in a mad frenzy upon hearing. We will open fire if you do not comply, the officer declares as he readies his pistol. I repeat, we will open fire. Without resisting, the limousine slows down and turns away out of sight. What do they want? The driver asks. His partner then shrugs. Amidst the commotion, an earth-shattering rumble cascades down the street. They all promptly turn their gaze toward the sound. Doc bulges his eyes wide open to see the black lion stringer charging up the road, leading a pack of other enlarged creatures. Hearing a familiar coo, he looks up to see a massive bird swooping by. It is Zipporah the dove. What is going on here? The driver yells. He slams on the brake, lurching everyone forward. Turn the siren off, his partner yelps as he promptly does so. 
All three in the vehicle look up to behold the incoming stampede with awe and terror. They see people dive out of the way, street lights trampled, signs knocked over, buildings slammed, cars bump into one another. Did that thing just say stop? The driver comments. The lion halts his pack as he sees the police vehicle. Doc suddenly finds Stringer staring directly at him. What is he doing? The driver whimpers. Doc, to a surprise, notices a look of weariness in the lion's eyes. He squints and catches a glimmer of recognition. Seeing Doc, the lion diverts his pack promptly leading them away. Remaining still, everyone then looks toward one another in astonishment. Doc keeps his gaze upon the lion's departure as he hears a thundering rev from behind. He looks and spots the limousine returning, but this time driving alongside a massive truck also painted with an X. They're back! The driver shrieks upon seeing it, flooring the gas pedal to speed off. The truck comes, gaining from behind, catching up in the lane next to them. A vehicle absurdly large, coated in thick porcelain, covered in sand and dirt, with wheels as tall as persons. Step on it! His partner urges. Doc looks up at the garish truck, hearing its roar beside him. He sees a burly man sitting in the passenger seat. Donning a suit, bursting at the seams, looking down at him, smiling. The truck then turns into the police car, slamming it off the road. Screaming, Doc launches his body across to cover Delilah's, preparing for a collision. They bounce up onto the sidewalk, flying at full speed, then crash into the side of a building. The two police officers hit the airbags. Doc and Delilah get thrashed about, sustaining wounds but still remain intact. Slowly coming to, Doc gets up to look. He sees the truck stopping just beside. The burly man hops off, along with two of his men. They march toward the police car. Seeing their approach, Doc sits up horrified. He looks toward the officers and sees them slumped over, unconscious. Trapped in the vehicle, Doc helplessly watches as the well-dressed gangsters stride toward him. The burly man comes up to the car with a crowbar and begins to pry open the door. Doc unbuckles his seatbelt, then retreats frightfully to shield Delilah. A man breaks through and drags Doc out of the car. Doc kicks and screams, but to no avail. With surprising ease, the man lifts him over his shoulder and carries him off toward the truck. My daughter! Doc yells. The man then gestures toward his men. Get the girl, he orders them. Coming up into the truck, he tosses Doc into the back seat. A Doc crashes into the cushion, struggling to straighten himself. The two other men return. Hopping in from both sides, they take their seats, sandwiching Doc in the middle, with the one holding Delilah on the right. Uncuff him. We want to make our guest feel welcome, the burly man announces. Yes, monarch confirms the gentleman on Doc's left. Give me your hands, he says. Complying out of fear, Doc extends his arms, backing toward him. A gunshot suddenly resounds. Doc jolts out of his seat, startled and deafened. He turns back to look and spots a smoking gun in the man's hand. He then raises his arms and sees the cuffs shattered in pieces. What's wrong with you? He shrieks, hearing his mousy squeak. <laughs> The whole truckload of aristocrats burst into hysterical laughter. Let's move, the burly monarch tells the driver. With a roaring blast, the truck launches forth. Oh, this is absolutely turning out better than I imagined, the monarch exclaims. I just had to see for myself. He turns to Doc and smiles. Welcome to the Aleph tribe. Doc, overwhelmingly disturbed, gazes upon him without a word. So you are the naked man everybody is talking about, the monarch says. How am I not surprised, Dr. Alexander? We have finally found you. What? Doc mutters. How do you know who I am? Perhaps we are better acquainted than you realize, the big man says. How? Doc questions, alarmed. 
Aren't you outlanders? Indeed, but here we are, the monarch answers. There's no place the Aleph's cannot see. We know where the goods are. We have our ways, keeping tabs on every treasure. Look and see, my fellows. We shall weep no more, for at last we have discovered our most prized. His underlings cry out and cheer in support, with screams and howls overwhelming the vehicle. In the midst of their hollering, Doc turns to see Delilah bouncing lifelessly in the lap of a whooping goon. You, Doc, are the final piece of our puzzle, the monarch states with a grin. Looking around, baffled, Doc sees the cheering continue. Everyone looks to be in exceptional spirits. Are you high? he asks. With a bellowing laughter, the monarch replies, <laughs> How can I be? after I've tasted the sword. Taking out an empty vial of M56, the big man smiles. Upon seeing this sight, Doc becomes horrified. What do you want with me? he asks. Staring at him still, the monarch calms his demeanor. To discuss our terms, let's start at the beginning, shall we? he utters. It is to my understanding that the man with no clothes, you, was the one that delivered the sword, yes? Sitting motionless, Doc says nothing. Reluctantly, I presume, the monarch continues. So you ran into some trouble on Gobi Street, and your cocktail set the whole world on fire. And heavens, is it easy to understand why? The sword is a thing of legends, he chuckles. <laughs> In under one hour, it has brought about the age of titans, unleashing the hounds of war. Oh, even the magnificent words they speak. You have certainly outdone yourself, Doc. He then leans in and remarks. But this begs the questions. Why? How? Shifting his gaze toward Delilah, he presses. And for whom? Doc, locking eyes with him, begins to sweat. What do you say? How am I doing so far? The big man prods. Doc strains for a long while, then blurts out. She's gonna be dead in 22 hours if I don't treat her. Twenty-two hours, the monarch exclaims. Dear me, are you in dire straits? Seems we have no time to waste. Well, you are in good company, seeing that we are eager to help. Doc then looks at him in utter disbelief. Now here is the beauty, he continues. Truly I want nothing more than for you to see your precious angel come back to life, be freed before her imminent demise, and we all know you have the means. You can save her, Doc. He then smiles and utters, Only show us the means. No, I can't possibly agree to this, Doc bursts forth. Unfazed, the monarch presses his gaze upon him. Let's not make this difficult. You and I want the same thing. Stop this car, I need to get back to my lab right now, Doc demands. Of course. Tell us where to go, and we will take you there. Suddenly stumped, Doc says not a word. Gobi Street, I presume, the monarch continues seeing that's where everything began. That's just my storage unit, Doc replies swiftly. Why on earth would I put a lab there? Suspiciously, the monarch peers at him, inspecting for a moment. Reasonable point, he says. I suppose you'd like to keep your castle a secret. Perhaps we share the same value in that regard. Well, I can't say I blame you, given your history. But worry not. I won't keep the fate of your daughter hanging in the balance. You want to have your secret? That's fine. You will simply come with us, and we will supply you with all you need to smelt us your weapon. No, you can't do that, Doc protests. This isn't how it works. Agitated, the monarch takes a hold of his arm, startling him. Then make it. You don't have the compounds nor the equipment, Doc replies. And that's just the easy part. You know how much programming it takes? The monarch then tightens his grip with his enhanced strength coming into effect. Doc feels the pain searing through his bones. As I said, the monarch addresses calmly, we shall supply you with what you need, tell us, and we will get them. There's no time, there's no time for any of this, Doc wails, losing his composure. There's no other way, Doc, the monarch shouts. No, she won't make it, Doc screams, losing his mind. Watching him in hysteria, the big man mutters, Perhaps we can help you with that. No, you can't! What if I told you we have something of yours? 
The big man then continues, that you may find useful. Doc stops to listen, suddenly perplexed. Trembling in his seat, he utters, Wait, are you who I think you are? With a shrug, the monarch remarks, Hardly matters now, does it? Oh no, Doc mumbles as his mind begins to race. You have Morgan? Confused, the monarch asks, Who? And you have the antidote? Doc questions, beginning to shake uncontrollably. I gotta call Sarah, he mutters. No, I can't, I can't involve her in this. Sarah? The monarch echoes. Give me the antidote, Doc demands. The monarch then wonders out loud. Is that what the S stands for? Give me the antidote, Doc screeches. Shaking his head, the big man lets go of Doc's arm. He takes a vial of liquid out of his pocket, shows it, then promptly tosses it out of the window. No, Doc screams. What did you do? What do you think? The monarch cries. You owe us, Doc. Do you know how long we've been searching for you? You want her to live? We will have the sword. Flabbergasted, Doc holds his head in disbelief. We've got much bigger fish to fry. It's not just you, the monarch continues. Do you understand what I've told you? Now get it together. Doc then begins to hyperventilate, straining while rocking in his seat. There is only one way to save her now, the monarch declares. You just killed her, Doc cries. She's gonna die, you just killed her. There is only one way, the monarch repeats. Just get me out of here, I'll supply you as soon as I make new batches. Oh, you think you're leaving, the monarch bellows. Well, take us to your lab. Exasperated, Doc howls in anguish, not giving an answer. Still hanging on? I must say, you're not as pathetic as I thought, the big man provokes. What's to stop me from making a poison to kill you all? Doc says, huffing ferociously, delirious. She's not dead yet, Doc, the monarch shouts. Stop fighting, we're all you've got. I can't breathe, Doc says, gripping his chest, his heart rate rising. He looks outward and finds that he sees no street lights, nor store signs, nor any indication of civilization, but only the lights of three other vehicles driving parallel, traveling in total darkness. Where are we? Doc asks. The monarch, seeing his prey slowly succumbing, relaxes his frightful visage. He leans back and replies, in a land of swallowing death. Hearing this, Doc stares out into the night, hoping to gain any sight of hope. The blackness covers and suffocates, unchanging in his hollow disregard. Slowly but surely, as his heartbeat recovers, he finds the view persevering, his predicament remaining, his ill fate unturned, his horror unbudging. He sinks into his seat, beaten up, bruised. Doc collapses, finding himself without a vestige of capability. Rocking softly in the truck, Doc locks his eyes on the floor without turning, keeping himself from the sight of his dying daughter held in a stranger's arms. As if any slight movement would cause unbearable pain, he sits silently still, lost within the muffled scream of the engine. Finding no lack of disturbance on the journey, he hears his abductor's animated exchanges, sustained in his deafening glee, as if they had obtained a prize. They prod and poke at Doc's naked body, wrapping their arms around a trophy. Doc, unable to withstand, turns his head toward the abyss. Continuing their ride to nowhere, they drive on without end, hours upon hours it seems. The night remains, their journey lasts. Doc, unable to rest, wanders his vision as he sees his companions beginning to doze off. Body barely hanging on, he slouches down, attempting to still his mind. He turns to his right and sees something outside. He sits up to observe. With great curiosity, he studies a series of tiny lights approaching from a distance. Tracking their movement, gathering clues of what they may be, Doc sees them drifting at a steady pace, bouncing up and down occasionally, conforming to the patterns of moving vehicles. Doc then looks around him, checking that no one in the truck is aware. Seeing no activity from them, he turns to observe again. 
This time, he spots quick, bursting flashes. Doc bolts open his eyes as he tracks streaks of bright red suddenly flying toward him, zipping through at blistering speeds. Ducking immediately, Doc begins to hear clashing bangs of bullets hitting porcelain and steel. The window shatters as a shot lands on the man sitting on Doc's left, killing him instantly. Another shot comes and hits the monarch. He bellows as he holds his arm. The entire crew suddenly awakes and throws itself into a frenzy as a shower of bullets rain down upon the convoy, every member bending down, holding their heads, shouting while ducking out of trouble. The truck sways left and right as the driver desperately looks for cover. Retaliating shots fire out of the three vehicles driving alongside. The man on the right places Delilah on the floor and reaches for his weapon. Drawing his pistol, he aims it out of the window, firing back. The monarch does the same and screams as he holds down the trigger. While they engage in the firefight, Doc hits the deck and searches desperately for an escape. He looks toward his left and sees an opportunity. Crawling to the door, he pulls the handle, yanks it too hard and breaks it. No! He gripes and slams his entire weight into the door. Again and again, he struggles to break through while bullets still zoom by. With one heaving push, he finally manages to ram it wide open. To further clear his path of escape, he pushes the dead man's corpse out of the truck. Seeing his abductors still focused on the shootout, Doc quickly reaches for Delilah. Spotting Doc out of his peripheral vision, the man yells, Hey! as he puts down his pistol to cling onto the girl. Both grabbing on, engaging in a fierce tug of war, the two men crowd on top of each other, struggling with all their might, with none relenting. The man begins to wrap his arms more tightly around Delilah, gaining purchase. Securing her, he gives Doc a swift kick in the stomach. Flying back off his feet, Doc loses his grip and tumbles out of the open door. During the fall, he braces for impact. As he hits the ground, he suddenly finds himself rolling along soft sand. Tumbling to a stop, he gets up to look, and sees all four vehicles fishtail away, speeding off from a hailstorm of bullets still tight on their tail. Delilah! Doc bellows, issuing forth a terrible cry. He watches on helplessly as the battle recedes further and further into the distance. With unending worry, Doc winces as a chilling breeze grazes upon his naked body. He then sets his eyes upon his surroundings. All is quiet, all is dark. Standing in fine, soft sand, he casts his vision to the far horizon, seeing silhouettes of a rolling terrain against the night sky. The dim moonlight faintly illuminates the ground, only giving teasing hints of shapes and shadows, obscuring it all within ambiguity. All Doc could know for certain is that he stands in the middle of an endless expanse. I'm in the desert, he mutters to himself. Instinctively, he walks forward, toward the place where the vehicles disappeared. Wandering through the arid plain, he looks up to the stars. Seeing the constellations, he gains a sense of direction. The cosmos shines brightly, with partial cloud cover obscuring its full view toward the west. They're gonna come back, he pauses to himself. Doc trudges on as the sound of commotion fades away. Gradually he finds himself alone in eerie silence. With not even his footsteps making a sound, he hears only his trembling breath. Stride after stride, Doc sinks his feet into soft collapsing sand. His legs stutter as if entangled in every step. He moans as he begins his arduous trek. Why are you making this so hard, Delilah? He mutters. Marching forth, he endures, trotting on in his long pursuit. 